Hi, welcome back to Book Buzz with Jan and Payne, a podcast where we talk about romance books, our current reads, and we also have the pleasure of sitting down with some of our favorite authors and chatting with them about their amazing books. Hi, everyone. Welcome back. It has been a long minute. It's been months, <laughs> not minutes, months, after we literally said we were going to be back. The following week, <laughs> I am so sorry. Things have just like starting the book box, and then us working full time, and then like doing all this other stuff that we do. It's taken up a lot of our time, mm-hmm. um, so it's gotten a little bit harder to be able to make podcasts, um, yeah. which we need to like figure out how to make time I mean if we can text as much as we do daily (laughs) pretty sure we can video call each other and record a podcast yeah yeah (laughs) but we can figure that out after book bonanza because I feel like right now things are just a little bit too hectic yeah but it's so good to be back I miss our little um book talks because I feel like I've read several books that I've been wanting to talk about and I'm just like who do I talk about it with like it's different when you're talking about it over text message because you can't really express yourself the way you want to versus Mm -hmm. when you're having like a video call or a podcast where you could hear the excitement and hear our actual like our actual reactions yeah so I miss that so we need to figure out how we can make it happen to where back on it again But today, um, we are back with a very special surprise, you would call it, a surprise Mm -hmm. guest, JT Geisinger. We are going to be talking to her about her new release, Liars Like Us. And can I just freaking say, that book is one of my favorite books of the year. Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. And I feel like we were talking about it. This, we were talking about it like two two days ago about how yeah. I wanted you to finish it so we could actually have a proper talk about it because I don't want to spoil anything. And I just I loved it. I loved yeah. him, even though I, in my honest opinion, he was like a stalker. <laughs> but like he was sexy. He was like possessive, alpha. He actually. He truly, truly is the definition of the trope. He falls first. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like hardcore, he is the definition. (laughs) And do with that as you will. And when I say that, I mean, go pick up the book because it is freaking amazing. But yes, we're going to be talking uh, with the author today about that book. We're going to be talking to her about her other books as well. Um, I know Payne was obsessed with Pen Pal last year. You yes. last, was it last? It was last year, right? I believe so. Yeah. And mm-hmm. I bought it, but I'm scared to read it because everybody was like freaking out after yeah. reading. Mm-hmm. So I was like, okay, let me read it. I am gonna read it. I actually have the paperback, so I'm definitely gonna read it. But today we're gonna be. Like I said, talking to her about her books and especially liars like us. So we hope you enjoyed today's interview because it's going to be super fun. Sit back, get something to drink, get some coffee. I have my coffee with me right here, some water, tea, and we hope you enjoy the interview. First of all, we just want to thank you and totally feel honored to have you here on our podcast. It's it is seriously surreal to have you here. I've been wanting to talk to you about your books. So I'm so glad that you're here with us on our podcast today. Thank you. That's very sweet. I'm happy to be here. I'm going to be drinking wine while we do this. So <laughs> <laughs> that's totally fine with us. <laughs> so to start off this interview, um, we just want to ask you what inspired you to start writing? Uh, well, I always wanted to be a writer and I was a huge book nerd when I was growing up. Um, I loved books and I loved to write. Um, but it wasn't until I turned 40 that I decided I actually wanted to follow through on sort of my, you know, my dream. And at that time, um, the Twilight series was really popular and, uh, I had been, 
I read an interview with um, Stephanie Meyer where she said she never went to school for writing and, you know, she was a stay at home mom and she didn't have any experience with it. And then she went on to write this hugely successful uh, series. And so I was really inspired by that. And I thought, well, if she could do it, you know, I might as well try and do it. And so I did. So it was kind of those two things that um, that happened at the same time that made me just jump in and, and start. So, yeah. <laughs> And was it romance always the main thing that you wanted to write or was it something different? Um, I really wanted to be like a literary writer because I come from a family of sort of like book snobs. And um, for me to admit that I was writing romance, you know, it was kind of like, oh, God. But <laughs> but that's, you know, that's what I, I, I like to read romance and um so, yeah, it, it was kind of, but, and also, you know, literary writing is completely different than commercial writing, you know, writing in, in genre writing. Um, so I, I just, I started out with like a, a fantasy series. It was Shapeshifters um, and it had romance in it, but it wasn't really my intention to become a romance writer, but I just sort of turned into that thing as, as the series went on. My, my agent sold the book and then the publisher came back when the book did really well and said, we want five more books in the series. So I had to kind of figure out how to flesh out that whole series. And, and, um, and then it turned out there was a lot of sex in it. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So now I'm a romance writer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So throughout your career, what is the most difficult part about writing? Well, I'm lazy by nature. I'm a very sort of low energy person. And I, you know, it's really hard to get myself psyched up to start projects because I procrastinate a lot. And my husband will always be like, get in there and write. <laughs> so for me, the hardest part about writing is actually just sitting down and doing it. So once I'm in the chair, or usually I write when I'm in bed, you know, sitting up in bed on my laptop. Once I'm there and I'm committed to it, that's easier. Um, but actually just dragging my butt out of bed and, and getting into work is kind of, <laughs> it's kind of difficult. But over the, you know, I've written 31 books now. So over the years, I kind of have gotten into a more of a, a routine, I guess, but it's still, it's still like pulling teeth some days to really, I love having written the book, but the process of writing the book to me is, you know, it's a little bit exhausting sometimes. And how long is that process for you from when you decide to let me sit down, let me start this book from scratch to it's done. I turned it in and it's fully completed and ready to be out to the world. Usually now it's about three months. Um, when I first started writing, I think it was like six months to a year. It took me to write my first book, uh, but now I have a little bit, I trust myself more and I don't, I don't panic as much. Usually in the middle of the book, there's some point where I'm sort of like, I don't know where I'm going. And, and now I know just to sort of, you know, relax and I can just go in one direction and write a few chapters and see if it works. And if it doesn't, I just go in another direction where when I first started writing, I would really agonize over all those choices for a lot longer. Um, but this, I took five months off after I wrote Pen Pal because I hadn't taken any time off in, in the 13 years that I've been published. And my husband was like, you need to take a little time off. So I took five months off and then I started writing Liars Like Us. And that took me a good, it took me like a month and a half more just to get back into the whole process of it. So I don't think I will take time off between novels anymore because <laughs> it's, it's too hard to get back into it, you know? For your process, what comes first, the plot or the characters? Um, well, I always start with two characters and a conflict. So um, my, my stories are very character driven. So I think the plot arises out of the characters. So in the beginning part of the book, I sort of spend a little bit of time getting to know who these characters are, but I always know, I always sort of have an idea of what the framework is, but I never plot out a book because for me, it takes away all of the, um, the surprise and the excitement. And that's part of the fun of writing for me is all of a sudden something will happen and I'll be like, oh, and I can go off in a different direction that I never would have thought that the manuscript would have taken. So for me, it's characters. Um, and then I, you know, I have an idea kind of where I might want to go, but I, I just let it unfold as it will. I don't, I try not to be too strict with myself about, you know, hitting certain story beats and things like that. Cause I get bored. So you are like, and I feel like I've seen this all over TikTok as well. You are like the queen of plot twists. 
So <laughs> how do you go into a story knowing what that plot twist is going to be? Or does that come as you're writing the story? Nine times out of 10, it comes as I'm writing the story. But in the case of a book like Pen Pal, I knew that whole story before I I wrote it because in order to get to that plot twist, I had to set up a lot of breadcrumbs along the way so that when the twist finally hit, the reader went, oh my God, that's what this meant and that meant and this meant. I couldn't, I couldn't let it just be loosey-goosey. So um, in that one and also in Perfect Strangers, where it's kind of like a book within a book within a book, um, those were much more uh, finished in my head before I started writing. Um, and, but the, uh, my other books, it's no, it's usually just all of a sudden something will come out of left field and I'll just run with it. Um, and I kind of, now I sort of know that I want there to be, it doesn't have to be a devastating twist, you know, like pen pal, but in the case of, for instance, liars like us, you know, there, I knew that the twist was going to be what it was. That's one of the reasons why I chose to only do it in a uh, single point of view. You only get Emery's point of view because if I had had uh, Callum's you know, point of view and he's talking, it would have totally given away the twist. So, <laughs> yeah, I, but I like to have twists in my stories. I, you know, otherwise it gets a little boring, so. <laughs> well, I'm gonna like jump ahead and say that with Liars Like Guts, it was very funny because I was talking to, about it with Pink when I started reading the book, I was like, okay, maybe this is what happens. But then <laughs> you, you start reading and you're like, no, no, it, it can't be that. And then you're reading and you're like, oh my God, it was that. Yeah. <laughs> I gave it away in the first couple of chapters. Callum said something and it was like, I don't think a lot of people paid attention to what he said because he told her the truth. Mm -hmm. um, and just sort of as a throwaway line. Um, but yeah, in the end, it was like, yeah, that was, he was really telling the truth. So <laughs> because I guess because of the, the, like, my mindset was like, no, she wouldn't write it too early in the book to where we know what's going on. <laughs> I'm going to disconnect from that idea. And I'm going to think it's something else. But then you get to the end and you're like, it was, I know. And I kind of did that on purpose. There, there was a point where I was like, I wonder if I should take this out. And um, because it is, it is sort of a, a spoiler, right? Mm -hmm. But I also thought, you know, people aren't going to, because now, you know, readers have trust issues with me. So now they're <laughs> like, what is she doing? I don't know. So it was like you, it's like, you know, she, she couldn't really have just dropped the whole thing right there, but I actually did. <laughs> so, <laughs> I know. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so how do you come up with your titles for your books uh it depends on the book with with let's see i mean with pen pal it was that was basically kind of i knew you know what the story was going to be about and it's such a simple punchy title um, and I have to be careful when I'm uh, writing a book, if I'm looking at titles, because there's, you can't copyright a book title. So I have to do a little bit of research on, you know, Amazon and what have you to see if there's other books out there that already have the title. And there are just a million, it's kind of like, you know, song titles are just a million of the same thing. So I have to be careful not to um, and if it is, it is, there is, I think there is another pen pal um, book out there, but it's like, a mystery. It's not, you know, it's sort of a the romance thing that I was doing. So I thought, well, okay, that's probably pretty safe. But sometimes it's like in the case of Liars Like Us, it's something that she said in the dialogue. Um, Emery said something like, when liars like us fall in love, everything else falls apart. And because it was a marriage of convenience and a fake relationship, I thought that was really apropos for the title. Um, and I like short, punchy titles, things like that. You know, Liars Like Us is kind of a punchy title. And, and uh, but it's my process is it varies from book to book. Some books, I know what it's going to be before I even, you know, write the book and other books, it kind of it comes to me as I go along. So I feel sorry for um, people who are writers and they look to me for advice because I'm very <laughs> it's like, I don't know, it's, you know, so the the inspiration comes from all different places. I don't have sort of a set bullet point of, of how it works out. So, and then in the case of like, when I was working with um, Montlake Romance, when I was traditionally published, they, their editorial department usually would suggest a title based on what the manuscript was. So 
there's it comes from all different places and that's what i was going to ask you if your titles usually would come before you start writing a book or would it would you wait until you finish the book to know what title have you ever switched the title before like you go into a book knowing this is going to be the title and, and be like no let me let me make some changes to that only when I, not since I've started publishing myself. So only when I was a uh, indie publish, um, when I was published with Montlake Romance, um, because they're much more concerned with um, making sure that there's no other titles that have that same title. So there would be like a department would go through, you know, they'd give me a list of like 60 different names. And then it's like, do you like this one? Do you like that one? When I started doing uh, indie publishing, you know, I just, I usually start with the title because a lot of times I'll have to set up a pre-order for the next book. And so I have to know what it is, you know? So, I mean, I like, for instance, my next book is called um, Fall Into You. So I already have that title and I already have the cover and the description and everything. Um, and then for the third book, I don't know what I'm going to, what I'm going to call it yet, but uh, it kind of varies. Well, that, that title sounds very intriguing and I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> So that that series is going to follow the three McCord brothers. So the first one was about Callum. The second one will be about Cole, the middle brother who has an attitude problem, which you can tell from the first book. And then the third book is going to be about Carter, the youngest. He's like more of a happy-go-lucky guy. So you'll meet him more in the second book because he wasn't in the first book at all. So far, who is your favorite brother? Like from those three? Um, well, I like certain aspects about Callum, but one of the things that I like about Cole is that he's got all kinds of secrets too. Um, and I, I really like damaged characters. So I think all three of these guys are going to be damaged in different ways. And, you know, they're going to be very ethically um, bendy. <laughs> <laughs> They're all going to be, that's why it's called morally gray, right? They're all going to be guys who are going to do things that probably are not, you know, good or that you should be doing in order to get what they want. So that's always kind of interesting to me. So, I mean, I don't want to say who I like the most because that's like picking your favorite kid, right? <laughs> <laughs> I like them all for different reasons. <laughs> Can I just mention that your covers, they are gorgeous. Like your oh. male covers, oh my gosh, I, I seriously, <laughs> I'm a person who love male covers. I have to say Pen Pal has to be my favorite cover from you. Yeah. Yeah, uh -huh. I saw that photo. So I use that model. Um, Sojmani is his name and he's like the most beautiful human ever. Um, I used him on book three of the Queens and Monsters series. He was uh, Malik in Savage Hearts. And so at the same time that I was getting the photo for that book, I saw the photo um, that I eventually used on Pen Pal and I didn't know what I was going to use it for. I'm just like, I have to have that. There's just something about that picture. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm like, that's it, I have to have it. And so when I started, writing pen pal, I just gave my cover designer the photo and I mocked it up exactly how I wanted it. So the, the cover that you see is kind of just exactly how I thought it should be. So, but yeah, he's very photogenic. And you know, the trend now in romance covers is slightly going away from all the hot male models. So I, I mean, I like to have all these good looking guys because um, the readers really like it and the sales are there. So I think I'm going to do discrete covers to go along with the hot guy covers mm -hmm. now for every book that I do. So Liars Like Us has a really pretty discrete cover. Um, so, if, you know, if it's on your bookshelf, nobody will really know what it's about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What do you like more, discrete covers or do you like a male cover? Um, you know, my husband is in the background laughing his ass off. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I like, I like both um, from, from like a literary standpoint, you know, as a snobby person, it's like the discrete covers are nicer because nobody really knows what you're, you mm -hmm. could be reading, you know, Wuthering Heights or something. Um, <laughs> but the man covers are very striking and, you know, those bare chest covers, that's why they have them in romances because they sell so well. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I do, I do like both, but uh I don't know. You know, I, I go back and forth. <laughs> go back and forth. So that's why I'll probably have both. I'll never just do one or the other. 
because I want people to get what they like, you know? Mm -hmm. Okay. So what's one trope that you will love to write? Oh, that I haven't written yet. Mm -hmm. Um, Someone was just asking me about this. I'm intrigued by reverse harem. Um, I think there's some, some issues there though, because for me as a writer, I always, I'm, you know, I'm a girl who believes in true love, like, you know, really. And so it's hard to have, okay, if there's three dudes, like, how is that true love? So I have to work that out in my head (laughs) somehow, you know, maybe she, maybe it's not true love. And she's just like, she's getting a divorce and she wants, you know, just to explore her sexuality. That's probably how I would approach it. Um, Reverse age gap. I don't think I've done a real big reverse age gap. I might've done like a couple of years with Spider and Reina in, uh, in Brutal Vows and the Queens of Monsters series. I think she's a couple of years older than him or maybe not. I can't even remember. Um, I forget what all the different tropes are. There's so many different tropes. I really love to do enemies to lovers because there's so much, um, you know, there's so much stuff there that you can get into with the back and forth and, you know, the hate sex and all that good stuff. So that's one of the tropes that I love the most. But um, yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> throw, throw out some tropes and I'll tell you if I want to do them or not. <laughs> I feel like right now, marriage of convenience is like a big, big It's a huge role. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's one of the reasons that I wanted to do that with the... Um, with this liars like us is because I, I haven't really done tropey books before. Like, so my mafia romances, you know, there's some mafia in it, but it's not really the dark, violent kind of mafia stuff that you think of. Um, so I wanted to make the morally gray series a little bit more tropey where it's either a forbidden romance or um, like, you know, marriage of convenience and they're all billionaires and, and things like that. So, but yeah, it's a, I think it's popular because people like the idea of what if you had to marry this guy just for his money, but you didn't really like him. There's a lot of juicy stuff that can happen there. So, and Anna Wong is writing these, you know, great things like that too, with all her, her trophy billionaires and the, yeah. yeah. So it is kind of a big thing right now. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> um, with, cause you did touch a little bit on how, you, whenever you wrote pen pal, but how did that idea, like, how did you come up with the whole idea of, what that book was going to be about and that whole plot twist like how long did it take you to plot all that out before you started writing the book I didn't I don't plot at all I never plot I I plotted a book one time and I hated the process so much that I just trashed the book because for me it, it robs the creativity out of it if I know if I have to follow the rules of where it's supposed to be going I don't like that I like it to just be um, I don't like to be restricted like that. So pen pal kind of came about over a few years because of all of the influences that I mentioned in the acknowledgements, there's a few movies that influenced it that were, you know, years and years and years ago, there was a couple of books that influenced it. And, um, when I saw that picture of Soj Mani, I just was like, this would be a really good, cause he kind of looks mysterious and he's very hot and sexy. And I just said, this might be a really good, um, I don't want to say the spoiler cause I don't know if everybody has, you know, <laughs> read it now. So, but, but the tagline for the book that I had in my head when I would tell people, they were like, oh my God, like, yeah, it's, it's about a woman who doesn't know she's, you know, <laughs> so, so that to me was kind of a, an exciting concept. Like, how do you set that up from the very beginning? And I knew that I was going to open it with her at what you think is her husband's funeral. So the whole book is very moody and atmospheric and it's a rain and the house that's falling apart. And, you know, a lot of it is at night. Um, So all of that, I just kind of set up through the book and it just, it's just sort of arrived in my head fully formed and I was able to write it very quickly because I knew exactly where I was going, which I, a lot of times I don't with books. So it takes a little bit more figuring out along the way, but with pen pal, I knew where I was going. And as I was writing it, these things would occur to me like, you know, boo, that line, boo. I'm like, I have to work that in somewhere. That was at the very end. And uh, a couple of other things where I would just run to my notebook and write it down. I'm like, I have to get this in. So it was a it was a a quick book to write actually because I knew where I was going. Let me just say, I need more Aiden and Kayla. <laughs> I finished How do we the do book. That? I don't know. <laughs> How do we make that work? <laughs> I finished the book and I was like, I seriously need more of them because I don't know how other people feel, but I was so sad. I got really <laughs> sad. 
toward the yeah, ending. There, there, I got a lot of email about that book, both good and bad. Like people mm -hmm. were very emotional over the book mm -hmm. um, in, in both ways. And actually it was really interesting to me because in the acknowledgements I talked about, you know, when my dad passed away, some of the things that he said and that he saw, and I got a lot of feedback from people saying, my mom had the same thing happen when she died. And, you know, and so that was really touching and interesting to me because I mean, death is kind of one of those big picture things that we don't like to talk about, but everybody experiences it in their family, you know, or, or before we go. Um, so it was kind of like a heavy subject matter, but um, yeah, I got, a, I got a lot of interesting feedback, but I don't know how I would, I guess it would have to be a prequel or maybe, <laughs> or maybe like, in the after, you know, like, how are we going to do yeah. that? I don't know. They were, they were a great couple. And I mm -hmm. loved that Aiden was just such a good book boyfriend. And so that's kind of mm -hmm. why it was tragic because they were so great and so in love. Mm -hmm. But I like a good tragedy too. And so that's one of the things with me being a romance writer. Sometimes I fight against that traditional happily ever after. And I'll do something where it's not really traditional. And I get myself in trouble trouble with readers sometimes because they don't <laughs> they don't appreciate it or they do and they love it because you know pen pal was it's probably my most successful book but it caused a lot of you know tears and teeth gnashing <laughs> when it came out. <laughs> but, oops. <laughs> Aiden, definitely definitely top book boyfriend goals ever. Yeah, that was the first time I had done that, what they call the, you know, the primal play, that chasing and all, you know, my little bunny. And that was the first time I had ever, I had ever done that. And I had a lot of fun with it um, because it's very, it's very physical. And, you know, he's chasing her through the woods. And that was all kind of new for me. I hadn't done that before. So I was just like, my fingers were flying over the keyboard. <laughs> but yeah, he's, he's definitely he's a deeply romantic guy, you know, and for, for somebody who is very masculine, he's not macho. Like a lot of my, a lot of my um, heroes tend to be sort of arrogant and macho. He's very masculine, but in the way that it's more like a protective and a caretaking mm -hmm. masculine. And so, yeah, he's, he's a real sweetheart. Sorry, Aiden. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, buddy. <laughs> we love you. <laughs> Um, jumping ahead to talking about liars like us. Yep. Uh, when, and we, me and Ping were just talking about this, uh, Callum was a very interesting hero. He was a very, like, if, once you finish the book, you're like, this guy was so, like, I don't want to say too much because I want everybody to read it. He should be in jail. Yes. <laughs> he was yes. a stalker, like, hardcore yes. stalker. I know. And yeah. When I was telling my husband, he's like, how are you going to make him into a good guy? I'm like, I don't know. I just got to do it. He's an anti-hero for sure. But that's what I was going to ask you. What was the challenge of writing his character? Because he does some things that you're like, uh, like, is this, are we accepting of this? Or are we like scared <laughs> or what? Right. Like, how, how do we feel about this? Right. Yes. And some people will hate it, you know, obviously. Um, and for me, but it, it's just, it's fiction and, it, and it's obviously nothing that you would, in real life, if that happened, I mean, to me, I'd probably love it, but most people, <laughs> most people might be like, he's nuts, he needs to go to jail. But I, know, I like, I like crazy men, but um, yeah. So it was a challenge making him soft enough to where when it all comes out, you, you accept that he did it because he was just so madly in love. Um, but you know, his methods were, his methods were sketchy. Um, and so I think that's why uh, Emery was just like, what is even going on here, you know? So um, I guess I could write at least some chapters or a book from his point of view, but usually when I'm, excuse me, when I'm done with a book, I kind of just want to move on to the next book. I don't really want to, rehash but I do have a chapter that I'm going to post on my website so that fans can kind of get um, some insight into what he was thinking at, at a point in the book um, because his it was kind of challenging at the beginning of the book he seems much more reserved and in control and you can see him start to unravel because she's not acquiescing to what he wants her to do she's not saying yes right away which he just expected that she would and so he gets all frustrated and pissed off about that <laughs> so you know the scene where they finally sign the marriage contract is his head is exploding you know he's like ah! 
And then he and takes her home and, and then it's like, okay, wait, what's happening now? <laughs> Why are you acting so weird? <laughs> and that's what I was telling Payne, like the whole wedding part, I was <laughs> laughing so hard because he was like a little kid waiting at like a candy store for this to happen. He was so angry. Tearing his hair out, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and and Emery and the attorney and the chaplain are just they're just all like, what the hell? Is My God, you know. And then he and then he kind of has a meltdown, and then he picks her up and carries her off to the car. And he's like, what is happening? Which I think, um, hopefully, the readers were wondering what the hell is happening too. So I like to have myst- So once one mystery is solved, then I like to put another mystery in there, so it kind of pulls you through the book. Um, so you can't put it down. And so my goal is always when I'm writing a book, I don't want there ever to be a point where everything is resolved so you can just put it down and walk away. At the end of every chapter, there has to be some little cliffhanger that just pulls you all the way through. At least I hope so. <laughs> that was with me. Like I started it because I said, okay, I'm just going to read one chapter. That's, I'm just going to read one chapter and then I'll pick it up tomorrow. And I mm-hmm. started like around, I'm going to say like 11, 11 p.m. I could not fall asleep. And I was like, one, because I have to wake up super early tomorrow for work. I was up until three in the morning. I had to force myself to, and I was like four chapters away from finishing. I was like, no, no, no. Like, oh. I'm almost like, I'm going to be dying tomorrow. But I, was, I forced myself because I could not put it down because I wanted answers to stuff yeah. that he was doing or stuff that was happening that I was like, okay, what is going on? Mm-hmm. And it was mm-hmm. So I loved it. It was so good. And- oh, good. I'm glad you liked it. Yeah, that was very purposeful. So, you know, I there's a build up to so there has to be a period of where these characters talk and they get to know each other. So you can see the chemistry and what's happening. Um, and then there's a build up to a climax. And a lot of times the climax, I'll add other stuff in there. So you just can't stop reading because it's like, well, okay, wait, what's happening now? And there's stuff flying at you from all different directions. So so I'm sorry that I kept you up until three o'clock, but not really. <laughs> it was it was worth. Who needs sleep, right? But, like you did mention earlier that you know his character does some stuff that you know it's questionable to her. Is this acceptable? Is it not? And then he mm-hmm. does things that you're like, oh my god. Well, he's like that was nice of him. Like yeah. I'm thinking back at like when they first meet to where she leaves and he follows her in a limousine with cops. But then mm-hmm. he ends it to where, oh, and I got you your salad since mm-hmm. you didn't finish it. You're like, oh, but yeah. so he's not he's not a complete bastard. He just will do whatever he wants, whatever <laughs> to get what he wants. So, you know, he is pretty amoral. Like he said at one point, I mean, it would have killed somebody if it would have come to that. And you're like, OK, <laughs> dude, you need some therapy. But, you know, but then he does all these little caring things where you're like, all right, he's not completely hundred percent, you know, a black heart. So that's where the anti-hero, that's where it's interesting because they have their own moral code um, and they do things for mysterious reasons that are not revealed until very late in the story. And by that time you're sort of charmed by them. And then you're like, oh my God, he's a psychopath. So <laughs> and that's actually was one of our questions was going to be like, would you ever write anything his, in his point of view? Because there's stuff that you're like, you're curious to write, okay, what was going through his head? when he yeah. this. So there's a, I, I took out a couple of chapters from him because I wrote it because I really wanted him to get in there. And I'm like, if I put this in from the beginning, everyone is going to know exactly what the twist mm-hmm. is. There's no twist, right? Um, and so I like to have that aha moment where your jaw kind of drops. And in this case, it wasn't a devastatingly emotional like Pen Pal or Perfect Strangers, but it was still a twist where it's like, oh God, here we go. Um, mm-hmm. But I do have, yeah, I do have a couple of things from his point of view that I will just post for readers, you know, to be able to enjoy seeing what his, his, how his mind works, how the gears are turning. (laughs) And one of them was after, you know, where she gets out of the car, after she takes the chicken salad, after he's, you know, got the, and right, so he says something to her, like, you know, uh, I apologize, sometimes my, and then he trails off, and then the next chapters from his point of view saying like what I was going to say is that sometimes my animal gets off of its leash and then he starts talking about how he wants her and how he's obsessed with her and all this stuff and but I'm like if I put that in that gives the whole story away I can't put this chapter in so no I'm taking it out so it'll just be extra material for later (laughs) I'm so excited because I'm 
I'm very curious to get inside his mindset too. Cause like I said, I mean, there was some stuff that he did. Like I would, I would, and I know you said you only have, have like one or several, but like the mm-hmm. whole wedding scene, I would love if he hangs <laughs> up on her and he literally leaves everything and has everything prepared. Like that yeah. scene was very interesting. I'm like, I wonder what was going through his head. Cause this guy just agreed to give her like another $10 million. Yeah. 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 So, it might, you know, maybe I should um, release more of that stuff because it would give more insight into, cause he's a guy who you know, has been brought up with so much wealth and so much power and he's the eldest son and then and a lot of responsibility and, and BS comes along with that. And he has never met anyone in his life who defied him and said no to him and just turned him down flat the way she did. So he was very taken by that. Uh, But then, of course, as he's stalking her, you know, over the years, (laughs) he realizes she's actually like a really good human being. So he starts to admire her and stuff. So, yeah, maybe I'll I'll write some of that so you can kind of get that from his perspective. But honestly, this book was like almost 100,000 words long and it just kept going and going. I'm like, I have to cut it off. (laughs) We have to stop at some point. So... We wouldn't have minded, you know, if it kept going and going. <laughs> you know, I might just because I might put some stuff out there just because the readers are are loving it so much. And it's really difficult um, not to have a dual point of view because it's it's easier for the reader to sort of connect emotionally with both characters. But in this case, I really had to do it just from her point of view because the myth is there of who is this guy and all the things that he's telling her are basically lies, you know. So but and but if I showed his point of view, you would know that right from the get go. So, yeah. yeah. And I do want to say, though, that I I think the reason I also loved the book was because with we don't have usually whenever you read a marriage of comedians, um, the heron isn't as fierce. And like you said, she says no to him multiple mm-hmm. times. She's the well, she I, makes fun of them. She laughs at him. She's like, <laughs> yeah. She so mocks like, him. Yeah. You have a heron that fights back. And I think that's what made things more interesting and better for me. Mm-hmm. And I like that because you're like, okay, she is literally putting him on the edge of his seat. Mm-hmm. Because he's losing control of what he thought he could control, but yeah. she's not at all what he expected her to be. Right, right. He yeah. thought this was just going to be, he's going to wrap it up. Mm-hmm in 10 seconds. And uh, I, the thing that I liked about her writing her is that I was able to, you know, she has to struggle with this because she has more of a moral code than he does by far. She's just like, you know, this sounds too good to be true. And she probably wouldn't have done it. So that's why I had to have this big uh, friend group where everybody, their whole lives are all falling apart too. And she feels so responsible for it. So devastated by that, which is really what makes her say yes in the end. Had it just been her, she probably would have just told him to go, you know, take a long walk up short here. But um, (laughs) yeah, so when everybody, you know, when, when he starts telling her at the end, all of these, all of these dominoes that he had to put into effect that he had to knock down. And she's just like, (sighs) you know, she, she can't wrap her mind around it. And then she just runs away. So she still has all her $20 million. She runs away to Santa Barbara and just gets drunk for like a week. <laughs> yeah. It's like, okay, how would, how would you really react? I guess you would just have a meltdown. <laughs> yeah. And I will say that scene, I was laughing because I'm just like, this guy literally is telling her in a way that it's, he doesn't really see anything wrong with it. Well, well, he's just doing the whole thing. Yeah, he's like, I was just hoping you, I would have more time so that you could fall in love with me more. You know, she's yes. just like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> yeah. So it's fun, you know. I mean, obviously, it's fiction, and we really don't. I remember when Fifty Shades of Grey came out, and it was such a huge thing, you know. And there was this, there was a big controversy about, you know, is it really consent? And he basically manipulated her and all that stuff. And I was like, listen, it's. If Christian Gray was in, you know, really in your in your life, you'd be like, the sky has super issues. <laughs> issues. Um, but it's fiction. So we can we can be a little bit flexible with what we would allow. <laughs> yeah. To a certain degree. Like I'm never gonna have a guy that, you know, 
doing something really, although I did have Killian Black, I was just going to say, I'll never have a guy who was like beating up, but I did have Killian Black do some bad stuff in the Dangerous Beauty series. Um, <laughs> and then he made a, an appearance in this book because he demanded it, so. <laughs> hey, if they're like, Callum for me was like perfection. So who can turn down someone? Plus, what is it, $20 million? I'm like, sure. I mean, right? I mean, yeah, I'd be like, okay, for, yeah, 5,000, I'd be like, great. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, honey. No, I mean, <laughs> yeah, it's just, I don't know. I think I tried to do a good enough job of covering all the angles because that's a really big uh, sell. It's like, okay, you're a stranger, you know, but she, she can see from online and from everything, like he is legit. He is a billionaire. He's not just making this up. He's not just some guy out of nowhere. You know, he is famous, basically his family is, you know, very powerful. So she has to sort of buy into that to a certain degree, but I think she senses from the get-go that there's just something a little bit off about him. <laughs> he's not book boyfriend goals. He's book husband goals. <laughs> Yeah, he's gonna be a good uh, he's gonna be a good husband. So they'll show up again in the second book, in the third book. You'll get to see a little bit more of their interactions and what's happening. Yeah. And I also love that um Killian Black made an appearance. I love cameos and I love that um duet. So I was so excited when he when he mentioned that his name was Killian Black, I was like, oh my gosh, there I love he is. this guy. <laughs> Yeah, so you can kind of see um, where I'm going with this because Killian is a character that has, you know, he knows everybody and he can get anything done. And he is definitely an anti hero. He's a guy who will do bad things to get his ultimate goal. And so a lot of people around him are sort of the same way. And, and uh, the Morally Gray series is going to fit into what. Killian is doing ultimately. So, um, but I mean, that might be a couple series down the road. You know, I'm, I, I'm making this big ensemble cast. We'll see where this all ends up. <laughs> I don't know. Um, so what's one thing that you love most about writing Emery? Um, I like that she, you know, she sort of has some anxiety issues. She wasn't perfect, right? She's funny and she's, um, she's strong to the extent where she really wants to be strong for the other people, but then she'll like close her office door and just get the whiskey bottle out. Um, so she was kind of a fun character to write. She loves her friends. Um, and it's, she's somebody that I would probably enjoy uh, in real life. You know, I would like her, I'd like to hang out with her in real life. So she was a, a fun character to write. And I like putting her up against someone like Callum, who is just so used to getting his own way. And he's kind of a pain in the butt really. And she just doesn't take his, shit <laughs> so that was fun her inner thoughts is seriously funny <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> well because to her the whole situation is absurd she can't believe it right and she's just like she keeps thinking who is filming me is there a camera you know she just doesn't understand what is going on and so I thought that was really funny of her to just not take him seriously at all mm -hmm. until he produces the ring. And then she's like, okay, you're nuts. And she runs away. <laughs> yeah. She's just a fun, she's a fun character. Be fun to go have a drink with her. I will say I laughed so hard whenever she finds out the truth and everything. And that she's at her friend's house and her dad is there. Um, she like her dad was hilarious. Oh yeah, and not he's like the one who's like pretending to be deaf, but he's not really deaf. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's I like to have side characters who offer a lot of flavor. You know, they can they can do a lot of interesting things with the with the script. They can throw in things that the main characters can't say or can't mm -hmm. do. And and I like to have little characters that just kind of sparkle in the background. And sometimes those people end up being the main characters in the next book. But um, yeah, her dad was pretty funny. He was a good little comic relief character. And I know you said um, to close off the interview, because I do have one question and I, I know you can't say much. I have, you said the brothers are getting their book. Yeah. What can we expect? Because Cole is next. What could we expect for his book? And have we met his heroine from this book already? I can't tell you. 
I can't tell you. In fact, I have the description up there on Amazon. And I'm like, I think I'm going to take that down because that's too, you know, it's too much going on. But um, it's going to be a, a forbidden situation where they're not they're not supposed to be together. Um, yeah, but there's going to be a lot more to it. And he has a lot of backstory. He's not um, quite as Machiavellian as Callum is in the way Callum, Callum just doesn't care about rules at all. He'll do anything. So Cole isn't quite like that, but he'll, he'll do, cause you know, these rich people, they're just used to getting their way. So they don't have the same rules that we all live by. So he's kind of up in that echelon, but, um, he is much more of a complicated character than Callum. Callum, I think, is pretty straightforward. He just had he was just kind of lying about the whole thing, but underneath he's just this dude, right? Um, Cole is much more of a complicated character. So the book is going to be a little bit darker. Uh, not dark to the point where it's like anybody's, you know, doing anything that will make you cry. I'm not, I'm not gonna go there in this series. My series books are always going to be a little bit. Um, lighter. My standalones are the ones where I'm going to get batshit crazy. So the next time I do a standalone, <laughs> watch, <Beware>. out. <laughs> watch out. The series books, they will always have twists, but they're not going to be emotionally devastating the way my standalones will be. That's where I'm going from now on with that. I've decided that's where I'm doing it. So that people at least will know. It's like, oh God, it's a standalone. I better get the tissues. Yeah. <laughs> let, me get a, let me get my wine ready. <laughs> Get the wine ready, get the tissues, get my neck brace, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and is that, is his book coming out this year or when do you have a release date already? Yeah, the release date, the pre-order is up. The release date is uh, September 28th. So only four months to go until Cole's story. Mm -hmm. I'm so excited. I'm trying to get these, these wrapped up um, pretty quickly because I have so many other ideas for other standalones. I have a standalone that I'm, I'm itching to do. Um, and I just have to force myself to finish this whole series before I can go off and do this standalone. So yeah, um, September 28th is next. And then the audio book comes out for Liars Like Us at the end of July or early August. And um, I'm going to do multicast. There's four narr narrators on Liars Like Us, and there's going to be five narrators on Fall Into You, which is the second book. So for people that love audiobooks, it's going to be a cool experience. Oh, I need to, I don't listen to audiobooks much. I think I've listened to like four, but that one sounds very good. And especially with this book, I'm dying to like listen to it to where. You know, it's a whole different experience, especially when there's multiple actors doing different voices. It's almost like you can see the movie in your head as these people are mm -hmm. talking. And I don't listen to audiobooks a lot. One of the reasons is because I'm very impatient. Like so, but you can speed it up a little bit. So you, yeah. <laughs> you can have the guys going, you, know, so you, don't listen. <laughs> you don't have to listen at talking speed. If you're like me and you're just like, let's get it on. So. <laughs> but yeah, you should try. That's all the questions that we have for you today. So thank okay. you so much for just joining us. I seriously can't wait for the next books. I <sighs> Cole's character is very intriguing, so I can't wait for his book. And for your standalones, I will legit prepare <laughs> tissues <laughs> for it. Don't say that I didn't warn you guys. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for having me. This is really fun to chat with you. I appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you so much. And we Thank hope you. you have an amazing weekend. Thank you. You guys too. See you later. Bye. 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 Thank you so much, JT Geisinger. It's, it was seriously so much fun and an honor talking to her. Mm -hmm. I'm not lying when I say that Liars Like Us is seriously hands down one of my top reads of this year. Whenever Valentine PR posted um, the sign up for the book, I didn't read the blurb. I looked at the tropes. And like how I said, it's like marriage or convenience is one of my like top, top favorite tropes. So I was like, oh my God, this sounds very intriguing. So I signed up for it. And then I read the blurb when Ashley said something about the book. I was like, well, let me read the blurb. And I was like, oh my God, it's going to be so good. But then you read it and it was like so much more than you expected. It was so much more than I expected. And it was phenomenal. It was sexy. It was suspenseful at some times. It was mysterious. It was a wild ride because Callum is a wild soul <laughs> that 
he was amazing. Like you said, he is, you know, I, I love him. He is that hero that he does some things that are questionable, Mm -hmm. but then the reasons why he did it, you're like, I can't (laughs) help love that he, (laughs) that he did that. (laughs) Yes. Yes. Mm Mm-hmm. So if you have not picked it up, pick up this book ASAP. Seriously, it is, it's going to be one of your favorite books of the year. The book is, it's going to keep you on the edge of your seat. I kid you not when I say that I literally was up to like 3, 3.30 in the morning because I couldn't put it down. That I was, I'm not talking 100% truthful. Like I could not put it down <laughs> at all. And then it took me like two days to actually have the mindset to pick up a different book because I kept thinking about the I kept thinking about the book I was like how do I move on from this (laughs) I want more (laughs) so if you have not read it pick it up it's amazing and like she said the second one comes out in September so I'm looking forward to September um and then her I don't know I'm just looking forward to everything because now I just want all her heroes uh, but thank you so much for joining us again. And I have to say it was so much fun. I loved it. I missed it. I feel like it's been what, like six, like what, four months? Around four months. Yeah. Around four months since we haven't done this. So it felt very good. Um, but thank you so much for joining us today. We'll try to be back soon because I do <laughs> miss it. I do miss it. I feel like there's several books that I've read that I want to talk about. Mm-hmm. So we'll try to make, we'll try to coordinate our schedules to make it happen. Um, maybe at Book Bonanza, we'll be together. We'll be together. Yeah. Bonanza. We can Girl, make- we, we will be so busy. We don't even, won't even have time to record. <laughs> well, we'll figure something out. Remember, we still have that um, Zoom date with Amelia and, and her husband, Josh. Oh, yes. So we'll make it happen. If it's not just two of us, it means you'll get us and Amelia and her husband again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but we'll try to be back. Thank you so much for joining us. We had an amazing time. If you are not following us on Instagram, follow us on Instagram and make sure that you keep up with our latest updates on interviews, on our book box, which we have some exciting things coming. Um, and then if you have any questions for us, just let us know and We hope you all have an amazing rest of the week and weekend coming up. And we'll try to see you guys soon. Bye.